Hello, my name is Roman Obermeister from University of Siegen and in this presentation I would like to give an overview about the European project DREAMS in which I serve as the coordinator. DREAMS is short for Distributed Real-Time Architecture for Mixed Criticality Systems. And the topic of this project is to provide an architecture for mixed criticality systems. Uh, these systems are now gaining importance in many domains and the major reason is that in many domains we have increasing functionality of embedded systems. This is something we can perceive in many domains. Some domains are shown on this slide. Uh, for example, in avionics, in healthcare, in automotive systems, in wind turbines, we see that there is an increase of the functionality and this results in more node computers, in increased cabling, in a higher amount of networks. And in order to reduce this cabling of the number of node computers, uh, we go for high integration. That means we try to integrate multiple functions on shared node computers to also use shared networks. But in case these functions have different safety assurance levels, this results in so-called mixed criticality systems. Consider, for example, an avionics system, an airplane, where you have a broad spectrum of electronic functions which range from comfort functions, entertainment functions in the cabin, up to safety critical flight control functions, in which case the lives of the people on the airplane uh, depend on the correct functionality. When we now look at mixed criticality systems, we combine multiple of these functions with different criticality on shared platforms, thereby uh, having the benefit of a tremendous reduction of the number of nodes, of the cabling, uh, also reducing weight, reducing power consumption, and we can also increase reliability. This is dealt with in the DREAMS project. In addition, we also look at multi-core platforms, something that is well known from consumer electronics, from standard IT systems, uh, where we now have a prevalent use of uh, multi-core processors. And this is also becoming more and more important in the area of uh, embedded systems and also in the area of mixed criticality systems. Some challenges that we can perceive in mixed criticality architectures are, for example, the modular certification aspects. This means if we combine functions with different safety assurance levels on shared platforms, then what we need to prevent is uh, that functions all get the highest criticality level. So that means if we combine a function of low criticality and a second function of high criticality, then the function of low criticality should not become safety relevant because it could interfere with the correct operation of the safety relevant functions. That means we need modular certification. We need to make sure that each function can be certified and validated to the respective criticality level independently of other functions that share the same resources. This is of particular importance due to the high cost that is involved in validating and certifying safety relevant application subsystems. A second important challenge is to provide platforms for mixed criticality systems that provide resource guarantees, uh, mainly looking at different types of resources such as processors, input output resources, networks or also memory resources. Furthermore, we need to uh, provide development methodologies that allow to specify and design applications at an abstract level using appropriate models. And then these models need to be mapped, transformed uh, to more platform-specific, application-specific representations and then to go to the final implementation. Furthermore, a challenge is to look at heterogeneity. Many mixed criticality systems not only include uh, applications that have different safety assurance levels, but they also differ uh, with respect to the models of computation or the timing models that these applications depend on. And furthermore, we need to look at end-to-end -end systems engineering. That means in a large mixed criticality system, we have different types of networks, uh, both networks on a chip, when multiple cores are connected on such a chip, and we also need to uh, look into off-chip networks. And that means we need end-to-end -end systems engineering by connecting the on-chip networks and the off-chip networks in order to allow the interaction between uh, different components on different multi-core chips. 
while at the same time looking into relevant properties like time, energy, power budget, reliability or safety. The European Project Dreams focuses is exactly on these topics. It's an integrated European project that started in October 2013. It's a project with a total budget of 15.5 million euros and it includes 16 leading European research and industrial partners. As you see on this slide, we have uh, four big companies, which also include the end users, the application domains that demonstrate our technology. Uh, these partners include Thales for avionics, Elston Wind for uh, a wind turbine use case, and SD Microelectronics for the healthcare domain. We have to Rheinland, a certification expert, to make sure that our results are applicable for systems that need to be certified. We furthermore have leading uh, small and medium enterprises contributing technologies in the area of networks, tools, software components, hypervisors, operating systems, and we have leading research organizations and universities that contribute the technology that is required for this architecture. The key achievements of the DREAMS project include on the one hand side an architectural style uh, where we define how we structure a system how we uh, form components and how we define the interfaces between these components. We also provide modeling methods for modeling applications and platforms. Furthermore, we virtualize the underlying resources of the platform. That means if we combine functions on shared underlying resources, then we need to make sure that security, safety and real-time guarantees are preserved while these resources are used for multiple applications. And that's the purpose of the virtualization technologies of DREAMS. Our third point is the support for adaptability. We uh, support changing environmental conditions and also resource fluctuations, for example, depleted energy. And in such a case, we can reconfigure the system to move to a new configuration. We support modeling development by describing the relevant properties of applications and platforms on an abstract level. And then we map the applications to the platforms by solving scheduling and allocation decisions. The modular certification is concerned with the modular safety case, where we support uh, independent safety arguments for different parts of the underlying platform. So this relates to the compliant items, for example, according to 61508, or uh, to also modular safety arguments according to other certification standards. And we also support independent safety arguments for different parts of the application. In particular, we separate the safety arguments of subsystems with different criticality levels. We also show the feasibility of the DREAMS architecture in three domains by providing demonstrators. And the major focus is also community building. So we understand that we need a critical mass in order to uh, influence the European industry, in order to uh, exploit the architecture in the future and for that purpose we have established a community where we bring together also other projects, researchers from industry and academia in order to perform research and exploit the results with respect to mixed criticality architectures. Here is now a look at one of the key building blocks of the project. One key element uh, includes the architectural methods and the modeling methods. We have an architectural style, which then is reflected in formal models describing both the applications and the platforms. As you see on this slide, we start on the left-hand side with application models and platform models that include variability. That means we have generic components with parameters that can then be fixed in a later stage. Consider, for example, an application component that uh, has a parameter or that exists in different variants, both a very reliable version with high resource requirements and a variant with uh, reduced resource consumption and higher reliability. As part of the variability binding, these parameters are fixed. We then come to the models where bound variability is present, as you see here in the middle of the slide. After the variability binding has been determined, we can then make the scheduling and allocation decisions, which involves 
a search in the search space where we need to find a feasible schedule that uh, meets all timing and extra functional requirements. This is then captured in the platform specific model. In case such a platform specific model cannot be identified because, for example, no feasible solution exists, we need to backtrack. That means we need to undo, for example, the variability binding or we need to even modify the application and platform models by, for example, providing more resources in the underlying platform. In case we found a feasible platform specific model, the endpoint is the configuration of the platform on the right hand side, where we uh, provide configurations for our platform technologies for our building blocks so that the application uh, can be deployed on the platform. Another key result is the virtualization technology. We provide a certifiable platform with services for input output virtualization. So that means we can interact, for example, with sensors, with actuators. We also virtualize the processors using hypervisors while taking into account time and space partitioning. In particular, we make sure that partitions cannot interfere uh, in such a way that the temporal correctness is refuted by integration of components with different criticality levels. We also provide communication services. These support message-based interactions as well as shared memory interactions on top of message passing. And we provide dynamic resource management for the, for the adaptation. The gateways in the architecture are responsible for the end-to-end -end segregation. These gateways provide the bridge between the on-chip networks on a chip that interconnect the different cores on a processor and the off-chip networks that are used to interconnect different chips. That means we have gateways between the on-chip level, between the level of a multi-core chip, and the off-chip networks that are used for interconnecting multiple multi-core chips. As you see in this picture on the right-hand side, where we have multiple chips, each with a network on a chip, interconnecting the different cores, and the gateway would interconnect this on-chip network with the off-chip network of this cluster of multi-core chips. A further key result are the adaptation strategies. The adaptation strategies support system-wide high-level constraints by introducing key building blocks of the architecture. And these key building blocks include monitors for monitoring different resource types, for example, uh, the processors, the gateways, the communication resources, with respect to their timing, their reliability. And the information gathered by these monitors is then used by the global resource manager for taking global decisions. Global decisions that are then communicated to local resource managers that are responsible for taking actions based on these global decisions. And these local resource monitors, uh, local resource managers, they provide abstractions from specific resource types. So that means that they provide an abstract interface in such a way that the global resource manager can abstract from all the details of the specific resources. And the local resource manager, in addition to providing this abstract interface, also takes locally decisions that do not require a global involvement of the global resource manager. And it interacts with the local resource scheduler that is responsible for the runtime scheduling of the resources. For example, the local resource scheduler of a time-triggered network would be responsible for the time-triggered dispatching of the messages according to a time-triggered schedule. I already mentioned the three demonstrators that we support in DREAMS. We have an avionic demonstrator, including an avionic display with different levels of criticality. We also have a wind power demonstrator that uh, shows the DREAMS technology in a wind turbine. Here we have a safety critical application that controls the pitch. In addition, we have non-safety relevant applications, for example, for maintenance. And we also have a healthcare demonstrator where a body gateway is used for remote patient monitoring. And in addition, uh, this body gateway also supports non-safety relevant applications, for example, for, for comfort functions. And these three demonstrators, they show clearly the benefits of the DREAMS technology and they also quantify the benefits when it comes to uh, reliability or the, the reduction in the, in the component, in the numbers of components and, and also the, the cabling as mentioned in the beginning 
of the presentation. A final point that I would like to highlight is the activity on community building and external collaboration. So we realize a critical mass uh, by closely interacting with other projects in the area. Uh, for this purpose, we have established a website. You see the link of this website on this slide. So it's mixedcriticalityforum.org. And on this website, other projects uh, can uh, communicate results. And in addition, uh, this website also provides a forum for discussions and interactions of uh, researchers from industry and academia in this area to exchange knowledge. And it's also a platform that can be used to communicate uh, technologies and products that can be exploited that might be of interest. So therefore it's also a mechanism to support the exploitation of the project results. In the community building we also organize events. For example, we organized events at the Hypeak conference that attracted more than 50 participants of the area of mixed criticality systems. We also pursue joint standardization. Influencing standards is something that requires support from the overall community from multiple projects. We furthermore provide information flows using mailing lists, we train the community and we establish an innovation roadmap. That means we point out subsequent research activities that are necessary in order to unleash the advantages of mixed criticality architectures. Let me conclude by pointing out that the DREAMS project is a project that leverages multi-core platforms for a system perspective of mixed criticality systems. We combine the chip level and the cluster level. That means we support network multi-core chips where we have on-chip and off-chip networks and we virtualize different types of resources including communication resources, including memory, including processors, including input-output resources. We significantly thereby reduce development costs because we have a stable architecture and we also reduce the time to market because safety relevant stable technologies are available and don't have to be reinvented, revalidated for every application from scratch. Since the architecture is domain independent, it can be used for multiple application domains, we can also exploit the economies of scale. That means uh, the fixed cost can be uh, used and amortized over multiple application domains for larger markets. We provide, in addition, significant technical benefits such as better flexibility, adaptability, but also higher reliability, security and safety due to the architecture, the modeling methods and the virtualization technologies. Thank you for your attention.